you could find out, well, how many bricks do I have left? And this would be a good place to introduce the tagging system, right? So objects can all be tagged by group. For example, we might want to tag the paddle as player. And tags are advantageous because I think they're indexed internally. It's very easy to get a list of everything that matches a certain tag. So for example, for our bricks, we could add a tag. Oh, here are the tags, not the layers. Add a new tag type called brick. And then if we go back to brick, tell it a brick. And what we could do every time we kill a brick off is we could do a quick check. We could find everything. Um, and then game object dot find game objects with tag brick. And so we'd return an array of everything that has a brick. So whenever it hits zero, then we would know to continue. And I don't think this is a very optimal way of doing it. Frankly, what I would do is I would um, have some sort of thing responsible for tracking all the bricks. Um, I wouldn't, just like the scoring, I wouldn't actually have this part of the paddle. I would have some sort of empty object, which you can have. I use these quite often. Whoops. So you can create an empty game object that exists in the hierarchy and it can be anything. And I would do something like, call this the level manager. And the level manager would have its own script. It would be responsible for keeping track of your lives, your scores, and the number of bricks. And what would happen, the way I would do it, is in the bricks start, I would have it do something like find the level manager. So at this point, I've got the level manager object and something like a register brick this. And then in the level manager, I would have some sort of, of array or list, like a generic list um, that would keep all the bricks in there. And then when I killed myself, I would also make sure to tell the level manager, hey, I'm now dead, remove me from the array. And the level manager would know all the bricks that are around. It would know when the bricks are gone. Um, and that works when you start scaling the game up and up and up, and you need to be able to track all the objects in the game. You're going to probably use more of these sorts of manager types. But here, it's going to be overkill. And also, I'm going to move, uh, so I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this level manager, which doesn't need to exist. I'm going to take this, find everything by bricks, and actually move it to the, the paddle, probably. I could run it every every frame. Actually, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? You know what? Let's let's leave it in here. So, um, the only thing I'm not sure about is if it's going to count us or not. Well, let's find out. So this is going to be returning a set of game object bricks as an array, something like that. Uh, oops, I guess it's like this, isn't it? Debug log bricks. So we're just going to see what happens when this runs. Wouldn't be surprised to get an error. So far, so good. Let's kill one brick. Oh, all right. It's returning the array. So that's good. And we should be able to get um, length of the array. We'll find out how many bricks are in there. Does return six. All right. That's what I figured. The object count doesn't go to zero until after the last one dies. Uh, which is why it's kind of a bad place to put it. Um, although I suppose I could reduce the counter, or maybe I could have, maybe I should do a static. Yeah, we could just register things here. So static int uh, num bricks, which starts off at zero. And every time we start, we're going to increment. And so now we don't need to do this anymore. This is way smarter. Debug log num bricks. Um, but we're going to take down the number of bricks by one when we kill ourselves, even though our game object isn't gone yet. And now... Let's see if this works the way I want it to. There we go. Now we're down to five. And this is so much more efficient. So the class has a class variable now that knows how many bricks are in existence. And if I can kill the last one, which I apparently can't because I'm terrible at my own game. We want to do something like that. Ah, too much of an angle. Anyway, it'll eventually go down to zero, which is great. So now the big question is, if num bricks is equal to zero. Actually, because I'm a belt and suspenders kind of guy, I like to go lesser than or equal to zero, because why not? Then we want to, um, I don't know, load a new level, right? And obviously, if we want to load a new level, we do need more than one level. So the real question is, what does it mean to load a new level? How does that work? Well, that's going to be very dependent on the game. For example, in this particular game, we might not actually want to reload a new level. We might just want to spawn a bunch more bricks using the instantiate thing. Maybe instead of manually placing the bricks like we have, we're going to create some sort of empty game object and have it be the, the level manager, and it's responsible for just spawning bricks. Um, but frankly, hand placing them is not a bad thing in this particular context, context, just because we could create some interesting maps, especially once we have more than one brick type. It's very easy to imagine that bricks might have more than one hit point, right? Very simple. 
public int hit points, which will default to 1. And on collision enter, instead what we do is something like uh, hit points minus minus if hit points is less than or equal to 0, then we um, kill ourselves. Well, then we'll just die. Um, there's an interesting autocomplete. And then what I'm going to do is take all this code, move it to void die. There we are. Code works exactly the same as it did before. But now we have the option of creating bricks with multiple hit points. So what we might do is duplicate this. You know, duplicate in here. Well, control D works, even though it's not in the context menu. So this is going to be called brick tough. And we could apply a different texture, or I'm just going to colorize this one. This one's going to be all red and nasty. Oh, no. See, it's all the same material, so I can't just do that. It's going to have to have its own material. So we're going to take our brick material, double it up. I know I'm going fast, but this was just kind of a side example, not something I was intending to necessarily demonstrate. And rename this to brick tough material. Make this guy the red. And brick tough now is going to get a different material altogether. Um, I guess we just uh, drag that there. So now we have two separate bricks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this brick here. Can I just do a swap? I think there is a helper tool somewhere to do that. But I'm going to remove, um, I guess, one of the bricks in the front, actually. This guy here. I'm going to remove him. And instead, I'm going to drop a brick tough in there and just move it to 0, 0, 0. And the big thing about brick tough is that it has three hit points. right? And I did this on the prefab. So normal brick has one hit point. Tough brick has three hit points. And if we play this, bang. Bang. Now this one should kill it. Bang. There we are. And of course, we could change the value, right? Brick tough, we're going to say they're worth three points. Or you know what? They complicate life. Let's give a whole five points for killing the brick tough. And that is very, very easy to customize simply through the inspector here without needing to change the code. We can have sort of a super tough brick or a medium brick, and then you can add more and more kind of functionality that way. But the question still remains, what does it mean to load a new level? Um, so I, I created this brick to demonstrate that, you know, you kind of maybe you want to handcraft all these levels. Well, a level really is this scene object. So really what we want is a separate scene. So let me take this object, duplicate it. It's, look at that, auto increments the number, which is great, level 2. Let's load up level 2. Yeah, save the current one. That's great. So level 2, which is just a duplicate right now, we're going to make it, um, we're going to take, I guess, all these bricks. Oh, and brick tough. And this is going to be a more chaotic level. So we're going to take all these bad boys and let's move the view. So we're looking, oops, directly from, I guess it's the back is what we want to see. There we are. Directly from the, br the back. And we're just going to drop bricks willy-nilly all over the place here. There we go. This is this is our level. Isn't it a beauty? I'm going to very quickly select all the bricks and make sure that they are on the exact zero of the Z plane, which is where they need to be. Other than that, they're groovy where they are. I can uh, hit play and then play this very exciting level full of crazy bricks all over. It's actually kind of fun and interesting. Wow, I got a lot done on one little blow here. And sorry, is my score going up? I think it is, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, fantastic. And we still have our level one and our level two. So what we want to be able to do is progress from one level to the other.